بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دا گورنمنٹ ہیز کوائٹلی ڈیلیسٹیڈ ٹو پاور پلانٹس وچ اوور فور ایئرز اگو ہیڈ بین پوٹ آن این ایکٹیو لسٹ فار پرائیویٹائزیشن ٹو ریز این ایسٹیمیٹیڈ ون پوائنٹ فائیو بلین ڈالرس ایمڈ ایٹ سیلنگ دی اسٹیٹ ایسٹس ٹو قطر ان اے ڈائریکٹ ڈیل ٹو اوائڈ اے لومنگ سوین ڈیفالٹ دا ڈیولپمنٹ کیم ٹو ڈیز آفٹر دا گورنمنٹ کانسٹیٹیوٹ اے نیو کیبنٹ کمیٹی ایمڈ ایٹ سیلنگ دا اسٹیٹ ایسٹس آن اے فاسٹ ٹریک بیسس The 2,460 megawatts capacity LNG-fired power plants will now be handed over to the committee to find a suitable foreign nation buyer. Sources told that the meeting of the Privatization Commission Board was called on Thursday to remove the plants from the privatization program. The Minister for Privatization, Abid Hussain Bhayo, who is also the chairman of the board, was not even present in the city and virtually chaired the meeting. Usually, the PCB issues a press statement after a board meeting. This time, however, no statement was issued apparently to keep the matter confidential. Neither the privatization minister nor the secretary of privatization responded to request for comments. The sources said that the board has recommended the delisting of the power plants from the privatization list to the Cabinet Committee on Privatization, CCOP. These were the only two valuable assets in the privatization list. After their removal, the existence of a privatization ministry or a privatization commission will come into question. The previous government of the PTA had put both the power plants on the active list of privatizations in an effort to raise roughly $1.5 billion for budget financing. In the past over four years, however, it could not address the issues or raise Rs. 103 billion in new debit to retire the government equity. These plants had been set up with government funding during the last PMLN government and are owned by the National Power Park Management Company Limited. Instead of the 70 ratio 30 debit to equity ratio benchmark allowed in APRA's tariff for NPP MCL's power plants. The sources said that the board meeting was informed that the PM's office desired the delisting so that the plants can be sold under the Intergovernmental Commercial Transaction Act of 2022. The 2022 law authorities the direct sale of the assets to the foreign nations instead of following the long and cumbersome process set under the privatization ordinance of 2000. The long process however ensures transparency while the direct sale arrangement may raise transparency concerns. As the decision will be taken mostly by the government without following any competitive process. There is one view that only 30% equity will be sold to Qatar and the price discovery will be based on non-factors, reducing the element of the discretion. Pakistan faces an imminent threat of sovereign default due to the delay in the revival of the International Monetary Fund program. Finance Minister Ishaq Dar has listed the sale of the LNG-fired power plants among the low-hanging fruits that will be sold to a range foreign currency. Dar has vehemently denied that Pakistan will default on its debit obligations. Meanwhile, Pakistan's gross official foreign exchange reserves have slipped below $4.5 billion. After the country made two payments commercial loan debit payments swelling $1.02 billion on Friday. For the current fiscal year, the total debit repayments stand at $23 billion according to the central bank. In September 2022, the PCP had decided to re-engage credit suits. Singapore to determine the price of the multi-billion dollar LNG fired power plants that Qatar has wanted to purchase for the last four years. Credit Suisse, however, has set the condition of clearing its outstanding dues of around $1.7 million and resolving three key pending issues that have obstructed the privatization of two LNG power plants that has a combined generation capacity of 2,560 megawatts. Pakistan had engaged Credit Suisse in April 2019 to sell the plants, but the contract expired in October 2020 and was extended for a period of one and a half years. The contract, however, expired again on April 29, 2022, reflecting the poor performance of all stakeholders involved. 